Great. So last time we were talking about tying these SQL files together here and tables. So now we are fetching these levels from SQL with GraphQL and we want to go to the next stage here and fetch the embedded objects uh, out of SQL as well. So <clears throat> let's go and see how we do that. Uh, there's a few different ways. Last time we were talking about using an association table where I have a separate table that has the ID of one object and the ID of the other. and We can just sort of query it. And those work okay. It's fine. when, But it's more what you would use when you have a many-to-many -many association with objects. In our case, every particular object is only tied to a single level. So we really just need for any one of these objects, we really just need to know the ID of the level that it's associated with. So we can make this a lot simpler by just going and adding those. So let's go see what that looks like here. If we go and take these association tables and get rid of them, then we can instead add the uh, actual ID field that we need to the sub-objects. So for example, a level ID field. And because we're using integers for our IDs, we would just do that uh, in the field. Now when we're trying to find all of the objects associated with the level, we can just do a normal query filter to find only those objects whose level ID matches that of the level that we're interested in. And this will be a much simpler way of doing it. One thing that you'll notice here is that the holes are not associated directly with the level, but with their uh, overall thing here. So we actually don't need anything uh, special for here. Also, as you can see here, for the single object, we're using this as a uh, object uh, and for the exit. And so for here, what we had done before is we've actually had the ID for that object in the level definition itself. We can keep that uh, if we want, or we could use the ID uh, of the level in the exit. Either way, it doesn't really matter. So one thing that you'll notice is we reuse some of these objects, uh, these tables here are types uh, that are actually different types of object, even though we're saving them as the same type of thing. Um, but because we've defined a different table in the database for each of them, uh, that shouldn't cause us any problems. So with that in mind, we can go ahead and create some of these uh, objects in our database. But first, let's go and run this again. So go back to our terminal here. And we'll start node. And while that's kicking off, let's go over to SQL and kind of see how that's looking. But hey, look at this. We forgot to delete these. Let's try that again. And now our server is ready to go. That's great. We don't have to check that right now, but we do want to check our database. And let's refresh the schema here and make sure that looks good. So now each of these tables, uh, when we look at its columns, should have those IDs. And it doesn't look like it did. Fort and keys. Oh, uh, this is where it didn't recreate these tables because we actually have already made them. 
So if we go back to our, let's stop the server here, and let's go back to our index file. And you can see here, when we started this, we did not force it to recreate existing tables. So let's go ahead and do that. Now, when we restart it, it will drop those existing tables and recreate them. And hopefully that should be a little bit better. Let's refresh this. And now we can see that the level ID is in fact uh, in there. So let's stick in some data here and see what this looks like. We'll start by just making a simple level and uh, we'll go through and, and edit this. So let's just say we have a 10 by 10 field here. We'll give this exit ID of one. Test level. This is only a test. Give it 30 seconds. And that should be enough. Let's see if it works. And there we have our level. Conveniently, level ID 1. So now let's add some objects to it. So um, also while we're here, we may want to go ahead and get rid of some of these other tables. Uh, we could do that now. We could do it later. Uh, but before we forget, let's go through and drop all these association tables just to kind of clean that up. This is one of those things that you want to be a little bit careful on since you can't really undo this. And if you actually had data in there, this could be disastrous. Um, we don't really care right now because we're just recreating these tables every time we run the code, but something to think about for future reference. cleaned up and now let's go through and start adding some objects so the first thing we want to do is remember our level here we have uh, just our one level uh, level ID one so now let's go through and let's create some other objects that are going to go in this level for instance let's create a couple sheep Okay, now we have a few sheep here, and if we wanted to find the sheep that are tied to a particular level, we can do that by a SQL statement. In this case, we want to select everything from here, where the level ID equals the level we care about. So it'll just return only those ones that are associated with our level. So let's see how we do that from code. All right, well, let's take a look at our thing here. We already had this thing for get levels. Let's add another one. 
but uh, get sheet for level with the level ID. Which is a sheep is could say find all, but what we want to do is not find all, we want to have that uh, where clause in there. So we need to know what the format is here for the where. And this is actually going to be something that we pass in to the find as a optional parameter. And if you look here in the convenient online help, inline help rather, you can see that they even have an example here where I have this options object and one of the properties of that object is the where property, which looks like it just has a couple uh, attributes right in there. So seems very simple. Let's give it a try. level ID. How easy is that? And if we want to know how this command is called, well, what we do is if I look back at our resolver functions here, we actually have a resolver here for the sheep that already takes a level object. And it can also take a data sources object. And now we can just simply and what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause this here just so we can run it in the debugger and kind of check out what this is doing. And of course, after we get this, we're going to want to return sheep. All right, so let's go ahead and debug this. All right, our server says it's ready to go. Let's believe it. Go to our playground here, and I'm going to take some of this stuff out. So first, I'm going to take out all these extra things. And I'm just going to get the levels with their name and description and time. And you'll see we don't have any levels. Well, that's probably not what we wanted. Let's see what's happening there. So we're calling the right thing. It's looking for the levels and finding all. But let's see, why is it not finding it? Let's go ahead and step over that one. And we have here a promise, so we'll have to kind of await for that one. So kind of a pain for debugging. So uh, let's go ahead and stop this. And I'm going to drop a, a wait here for this async call. And we'll start it again. And it, once again, it's just not fetching anything from the database. Let's take a look at our database and make sure that that's all looking good. Uh, 
Well, it's really, it seems like we have all the data we need here. Oh, tragically, we made a slight mistake. Let's go ahead and stop this here and go back and fix that. What happened here is we left our fourth statement in here. So every time we're running this, it's actually dropping all of our existing tables. That's definitely not what we want to do, especially if we're not jump starting this with some uh, data from somewhere else. So we'll have to go and add those back in quick. So once again, let's go add those objects. Test level, this is a test. And now, let's go and make sure that's working. So now we have our data in there, it's pulling up. And you'll notice if we try to get the sheep, with their x loc and c loc, we will see that because we called this uh, resolver here, we're now getting this and we have the level ID here. So now we can get this find all and it will go and retrieve those uh, levels for us. So let's take a look at that. And you can see that right now there are none. That's okay. That's expected. We saw that uh, it's going to be the same problem that we had last one. And I want to point out something here that's very interesting. So when we try to query this with the sheep, uh, you'll see that it's calling this function. So because I have sheep in this query, it will call the sheep resolver here. You can see the code stopping. If I do not have sheep in my query. That function is not called. And this is kind of one of the cool things with GraphQL. It's very efficient. Not only do you only get the data down from the server that you want, but the server only has to query for the data that you ask for. Uh, in a typical database, we often will request, it, it will fetch everything from the database and then oftentimes even send it all back down over the line, and then you have to throw away a bunch of data you don't need. Because GraphQL is much more surgical, you can, uh, you can be more exact. So very cool. All right, now let's uh, take out this breakpoint here so we don't need it. And let's go back to SQL and add in a couple of sheep. So just like we did before, We'll do five five at level one. Let's do negative five, negative five at level one. Level two, let's give it a sheep right in the center, <coughs> as well as one off to the side. Okay, we made some sample data. We'll apply it. Looking cool. We have our IDs here. They're tied to levels. And now when we go to our query, 
we'll see that for each of the uh, sheep, it's now returning that object. Uh, that's exactly what we want to have happen. And that's pretty much all that there is to it. So as we go through here and we have these other objects that we're trying to get, we're basically just going to do the exact same thing. We have to do this for each of the each of the things here. So we have the sheep, the exit, fences, electric fences, bushes, puddles, mud puddles, holes, dogs, and stars. And we just go ahead and do this exact same thing uh, for each of these. We can make our sample data in there and test it out. And for each of these things in our resolver, uh, as, we, as we create those named objects here, so I could say get exit for level, uh, get fences, get the e fences, pushes, puddles, mud puddles, holes, dogs, and finally stars. And we'll go fill these in in a second, but for now, just to kind of get them going, we can go to our resolvers, and we're going to basically just copy this function for each of these. So they're all going to have the exact same format. Now one of the cool things, because of the way GraphQL works like this, you can actually instrument uh, your queries very, very accurately. You can tell not only what objects are being fetched, but even what properties or sub-properties of those objects are being fetched. Uh, and then you can really decide how to tune your application. So with all these done, uh, we now actually have amazingly quickly written the entire resolver that we need for the game, at least in its current state. And if we go and try to fetch these things, well, we might have some issues because they don't have a lot of these parameters. So this might give us some errors because Stardex is not supposed to be this. And remember, we actually aren't fetching from the dog field and whatnot now. We're still fetching from sheep object. So anything that doesn't match the signature of what that's expecting is going to cause problems. But that's okay. 
is we can basically just go and look at our SQL database here to remind ourselves of what we call these things. Oh, this is a terrible name. Go change that to be an actual so an object type. We don't need to use the C sharp types as names. And uh, it looks like we never made an electric fences object. Probably once again because we were thinking we're going to use single object type for that. So let's go add that as well. Looks like we did the same thing with Bush. Let's uh, add in that one too. Object. All right, now we have everything all defined. We probably want to go back and clean up these variables so they're not uh, all named sheep. That actually won't affect our program, but it's always good to do that to kind of keep the code readable and not make it too bizarre for people. And now we see we can catch the sheep. When we look for dogs, it doesn't find any dogs, but again, to be expected, we didn't add them to the database. So. It's very tedious for us to keep going back and adding things to the database. So next thing we want to do is we're going to add a way to create levels uh, and show you kind of how to do that in GraphQL. We call those mutations in GraphQL, and it's kind of the next thing that we'll work on. So hope you like that so far, and we will see you next time.